Hello and all, this is my view of the Ruby Official Manga Chapter 17, and just, wow, they cut out a lot from this. I mean, they cut out, they cut out the whole train ride, that's, you know, all of Ublak and Zwei fighting together, which is probably some of the greatest things we ever got in all of Ruby. Uh, they got out the crazy white fang member with a chainsaw battling Weiss. Uh, they cut out Yang's fight against Neo, which also means they cut out Raven's entire appearance in the series, her first, you know, entry into the series, or second, really, considering we also skipped, you know, Yang and Blake having a whole deep conversation about Yang looking for a mother and almost getting Ruby killed as a child, which, uh, you know, some bad sistering right there, but yes, that means no Raven mention up to this point, we're basically at the end of volume two, so that's just kind of weird. We can have her just mentioned at, like, the end of volume three with the whole fiasco I mean, I could technically see her coming in then, during all the chaos and all that. Maybe she helped save Yang in that situation. I mean, that would make more sense, as Yang was in way more danger then, and then it would kind of make more sense that Yang would seek her out after that moment, and instead of, you know, several months after her last contact with her. That could make a lot of sense, but, uh, yeah, so, whole lot cut out. A little disappointed by that, uh, but, you know, the series has not, uh, done me wrong yet. They've managed to do some very impressive things really revitalize the characters, really, and really giving a better understanding of their motivations and why it is they do what they do, what drives them. So I have faith that the uh, cutting all that is going to be worth it in the end, somehow, some way. Though, I guess I should say I'm not really sure how long the series is going. Are they actually going to go, you know, all the way to the end, all the way to essentially the end of the series? Or are they just going to end after, you know, the fiasco with the festival or they give a different ending? Like maybe Team Ruby doesn't fail, maybe they overcome, maybe they beat Cinder and Torchwick. Actually, Torchwick might have died this chapter, so that'd be a whole lot of questions there, but let's get into this. And we open up with a peaceful streets, people on their phones walking around before a deep rumbling hits the earth. And then a giant explosion literally rips the ground to pieces, sends a fireball 100 feet into the air. Yeah, uh, not gonna lie, we see a lot of people just standing there. I, I think I would have started running in the opposite direction at that point. Especially if I lived in a world where giant monsters were, uh, you know, a common occurrence. Just just my own preference there. I am at my heart a coward. <laughs> and I do just love to take a moment to show everyone's reaction to that. Uh, Team Juniper, for some reason, uh, Nora's holding on to Pyrrha. I guess it makes her an amount of sense. I only has to ask, the heck was that? I just now noticed that Neptune is holding a kitten. He appears to be saving a kitten from the trash here. That's interesting. I completely missed that the first three times I read this. Huh. Okay, so I guess he found her in the trash and he's helping her up, getting her, making sure she's okay. That's curious. Okay. Uh, good on you, Neptune. That's actually a really nice thing for you to do. And son's reaction to all this is just hilarious. Did you just hear a big wham? <laughs> oh, that's such a son thing to say. Meanwhile, Team Oz Pen is kind of uh, wondering, Hey, Oz, you heard that, right? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Anyway, then we see the uh, huge hole that was made in the ground. Somehow, Tortwick is okay. I'm not entirely sure how. I guess Neo saved him. We didn't see a single sign of her, so that's kind of interesting. Oh, and hey, so is Team Ruby. Good for them. Anyway, then we go full flashback and see Team Ruby on the train discovering the bombs and... I must say, I like this more uh, futuristic bomb design. I mean, the main series is basically just a cylinder with a timer on it. These actually look like futuristic super weapons you'd see in this series. They seem to be, like, uh, frozen and preserved, so they don't go off until they reach a certain temperature. Anyway, then they decide to split up. Ublak, I mean, Dr. Ublak, is going to figure out a way to disarm, or at least weaken the bombs, and Team Ruby is going to disconnect the train cars so that the explosion isn't quite so big. And you know, at this point, they think they've won. They think they've beaten Torchwick since he's only managed to do a little bit of damage. He didn't manage to destroy the entire city. Uh, but that was not the entirety of his plan. As a, a whole bunch of giant grim pop out of the hole. And seriously, this might be one of my favorite shots from the entire series so far. It's all these grim roaring as they burst free. Ready to destroy and kill and basically just wipe out the entire city. And uh, Torchwick's plan here is actually fairly terrifying. He's essentially designed a perpetual death machine. Uh, he's going to release these few grams, which are going to kill some people. And then the screams of the people, the negative emotions, all that, are going to attract more grams, which come up the hole, which are going to kill more people, which are going to cause more negativity, which are going to attract more gram. 
Essentially, his plan isn't just to destroy the city. It's to literally obliterate the entire kingdom right here and now. Okay, that's, uh... <laughs> that, that's thinking big there. That's thinking big. I mean, I always assumed that this was essentially a distraction. A plan meant to fail so Torchwick could, you know, be captured. So that he could uh, break out and take control of the Atlesian fleet down the road. No, it's it seems like that was the backup plan. The main plan was just, let's kill everybody. So, okay, yeah, that definitely screams, I'm the evil villain here. Wow. Did you love how absolutely horrified Ruby looks when she realizes the entirety of his plan of how absolutely truly screwed they are? She's starting to give up hope there, which, Ruby, that's a fairly terrifying thing to happen. I do love this next page is showing all of Team Ruby fighting, showing what they can do. You know, Ruby is using her speed to dodge the uh, Scorpion's pincer. Weiss is freezing the gram. Blake is using her semblance to avoid being cut in half by the Ursa. And uh, Yang just straight up punching this 200 foot long snake right in the face, which is just such a her thing to do. And then we get some more evil monologuing by Torchwick, which I know I keep saying this, but he comes off so much more evil in the manga. I mean, seriously. Haha, <laughs> yes. Keep up the struggle. The stronger those convictions, the more sickly satisfying the sound when they finally snap. Wow, that's an evil line to say. I mean, seriously, Torchwick, I love you. I love how evil you sound. And you know, Team Ruby, uh, they are definitely being overwhelmed. They definitely can't handle this all on their own. They're starting to lose. And Ruby, she takes a pretty devastating blow to the back, is knocked down, and is uh, fairly close to being murdered by the bear. Thankfully, though, she has some more allies to come to give her some backup. Jean and Pierre, and uh, wow. I gotta admit, John has never quite looked as heroic as he does right here. Good for him. I mean, I know Piero is doing most of the work, but still pretty impressive. Though, once more, you know, a little sad. They cut out John's whole big solo fight against the Earth, so that was his, you know, big crowning moment, the moment he proved he really has grown from the scrawny little runt in the first volume. But, oh well. Nora and Ren are also here giving some backup to Yang. And Sun and Neptune show up to save Blake and Weiss. <laughs> And uh, you just gotta love Neptune, uh, your little salute to Wise trying to flirt with her in the middle of this huge epic showdown. <laughs> oh god, it is just such a Neptune thing to do, and I love him for it. Team Coffee is also here, it's just more of a little fan tourist than anything else, I think. Though I do love Velvet basically drop kicking that giant Grim, that's pretty funny. Anyway, at this moment that Ruby's hope is restored and Torchwick starts to despair because he realizes something. Hmm. There aren't any more Grimms showing up. There should be some more Grimms showing up. And, you know, come to think of it, I don't hear anyone screaming in despair as they're being brutally slaughtered by the Grimm. Actually, come to think of it, I don't hear anyone around. What's going on here? Turns out, Dr. Ublek was one step ahead of him this whole time. Uh, using his knowledge of the train systems, the city, everything, he was able to approximate exactly where the train was going to pop out, where it was going to explode, and was able to send out a warning to General Ironwood and Glinda. So Ironwood used his battleships to evacuate most of the area so that there was no one there for the Grimm to actually kill. And thus, there was no despair, and thus, no more Grimm showed up. A truly, truly brilliant plan, and if there's one thing this manga has done, it has given me a whole nother level of respect for Dr. Ublack. I do just love that Glinda says, sharp as ever, that Dr. Ublack. I, I feel like she's been corrected one too many times now, even when he's not around, she still adds on the doctor. <laughs> Though he's definitely, uh, you know, deserving of this moment, since he basically saved uh, the city, maybe the entire kingdom from utter ruin and devastation right here. And Torchwick, uh, he's fairly annoyed at this situation when he realizes he's basically lost. At which point Ruby comes in and says, whatever you try, a huntsman will never lose. You're done for. And it appears that she cut him in half. Did Ruby just kill Torchwick? I mean, that'd make a lot more sense with uh, what happens with Neo down the road if she straight up murders him, but... That feels a little uncharacteristic of her to, you know, kill him in the streets. I, I'm not really sure what to say in this situation. I mean, Torchwick just tried to, you know, commit genocide, mass murder, kingdom side. I mean, he tried to kill an entire freaking country. 
He's definitely deserving of death. I'm not sure how I'd feel about Ruby straight up killing a human being. That's... That, that's interesting. That's... I mean, the main series always kind of shied away from the thought of, you know, Ruby or anyone of them ever actually being responsible for someone's death because that kind of makes it a little harder to like them as a protagonist, but there's a good chance she just killed him. There's the other side, there's... I mean, of course, on the other hand, there's also a possibility, you know, she just seriously hurt him or is a very powerful thing, so she might have cut through it, give him a nasty blow, nasty cut, till he'll be fine once he gets a little medical attention... Uh, not sure, but please, let me think of all that down below. Do you think uh, she actually just killed Torchwick? Uh, definitely a little early, but it'd make a lot of sense. And it would definitely make uh, Neo's revenge make a lot more sense. Also, please, let me think about what they cut off from Mango. They, like I said, they skipped the whole freaking train ride. Uh, so no Raven, but like I said, she might appear, you know, when Yang really needs her instead of when Yang was just uh, starting to lose the fight. I mean, there's a moment coming up where Yang is really going to be in need of her mother to provide a little bit of backup. So that could actually lead us to a Raven vs. Adam fight. <gasps> oh, that would be pretty freaking amazing. I'd really love to see that. Uh, not sure who would win. Honestly, not sure. But yeah, anything, all that down below. Be sure to like, subscribe to the next video. And until then, peace.